This is a hard differentiation modelling question. It involves radians, which is a year two math topic. Understanding radians is very straightforward though, so I'll go over that first before we start the question. If you've already covered radians, then just skip ahead to part A. So in our question, we're given an angle of 0 0.8 radians. So 2 pi radians corresponds or is equal to 360 degrees. Now what we have here is a small slice of a circle called a sector. If we were to do 0 0.8 divided by 2 pi, so remember that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees, the two things are equivalent. If we were to do 0 0.8 divided by 2 pi, that tells us the fraction of the circle that this sector corresponds to. If you multiply that by 360, then you will convert this angle of 0 0.8 radians into degrees, which gives us 45.8 degrees. So the general equation to convert between degrees and radians is your angle in radians divided by 2 pi is equal to your angle in degrees divided by 360. So in this question we'll be working out the area of this sector. We can do so by considering the fraction of the circle that we have, 0 0.8 over 2 pi, and multiplying that by the area of a full circle with the same radius of r, and that will give us the area of this sector. We'll also have to work out this arc length here. And again, we work out the fraction of the circle that we have and multiply that by 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the full circle. The fraction of the circle that we have multiplied by the circumference of the circle will give us this arc length here. OK, now for part A. We want to show that the surface area of the toy is given by the equation below. So the information that we have here is basically a description of what's happening in the diagram. I think it's pretty clear what's happening in the diagram, so I'm not going to go over that. We're also told that the volume of the toy is 240 centimeters cubed. OK, so to work out the surface area, we have to work out the area of this face here, which is the sector, times it by 2, because we have one of those at the bottom as well. Work out the area of this side, and then times that by 2 as well. And then finally work out this front face here. So to work out the area of the sector, which is this top part here, we would do the fraction of the circle that we have, 0 0.8 over 2 pi, and then multiply that by the area of a circle, pi r squared. And again, because we have that shape on the top as well as the bottom, we times that by 2. So that's the first part. We then have the area of these two sides. And those are just rectangles, so we would just do h multiplied by r, and then times that by 2, so 2hr. And finally, we have this curved area here. This is also a rectangle. So if we were to do this length multiplied by this length, we would get the area of that curved rectangle. This length here is the arc length of this sector. To work out that arc length, we do, again, the fraction of the circle that we have, 0 0.8 over 2 pi, multiplied by the circumference. So that now gives us the arc length, times that by the height h, and we get the area. OK, now we can simplify. So for the first term, that is this one over here, we have 2 pi on top, 2 pi at the bottom. They cancel out, and we're left with 0 0.8 r squared. The next term, nothing really to simplify there. The final term, again, we have 2 pi on the top, 2 pi at the bottom. So this gives us 0 0.8 rh. So what we have here is not quite the same as what we have down here. The difference is that, the key difference is that in our expression we have h, and in the expression that we want to get there is no h. 
So we have to come up with some equation to get rid of that h, and we can do so by considering the volume of the toy. So we know the volume of the toy is equal to 240. We can get an expression for the volume of the toy from the diagram. We would do the area of the sector multiplied by height. Area of the sector would be, we've worked this out before, it's just this over here, fraction of the circle that we have multiplied by the area. So 0 0.8 over 2 pi times pi r squared. And then multiply that by the height of the shape. Okay, let's simplify that. So 240 is equal to, so the pi's cancel out. 0 0.8 divided by 2 is just 0 0.4. So it becomes 0 0.4 r squared h. Rearrange this for h, 240 over 0 0.4 r squared, and 240 over 0 0.4 is 600. We can now sub this equation into this one, so replace both of the h's with this. And we would end up with 0 0.8 r squared plus 2r, so replace this h with this, and we'd end up with 600 over r squared. Final term, 0.8r times, again, 600 over r squared. Okay, we can simplify. First term just stays as it is. Second term, the r's will partially cancel. We'll get 1200 over r. And final term, 0 0.8 times 600 gives us 480, again over R. And then we can combine these two things to give. So 1200 plus 480 will give us 1680 over R, which is what we want. And now for part B, we want to use algebraic differentiation to find the value of R for which S has a stationary point. So, when s has a stationary point, the differential of s with respect to r will be zero. So that's what we want to work out. We can rewrite the s as 0.8 r squared plus 1680 r to the minus 1. That'll make it a little bit easier to differentiate. And then ds dr would be 1.6 r minus 1680 r to the minus 2. We then want to set this equal to 0. So we get 1.6r minus 1680 over r squared is 0. I'll times everything by r squared. 1.6r minus 1680. Oh, this should be r cubed. That's equal to 0. And then rearrange. 1.6 r cubed is equal to 1680, divide by 1.6, which is 1050, and then cube root, which gives us 10.164, or about 10.2 centimeters. And finally for part C, prove by further differentiation that this value of r gives the minimum surface area of the toy. Okay, so to find the nature of the turning point to show that it is a minimum, we have to double differentiate. So differentiate this expression one more time. We are differentiating this over here. That will then become 1.6 plus 3360 r to the minus three. We're not going to be setting this equal to zero this time. Now what we do is we would sub in the value of r that we got before. So the value of r would be have a stationary point. So put in r is equal to 10.2. And this gives me 4.8. 4.8 is positive. That means that the rate of change of gradient is positive. That's what d squared s dr squared tells us. If the rate of change of the gradient is positive, that means it's increasing. It will be increasing around a local minimum. Here is a minimum. 
and the gradient around that point is increasing as we move towards the right.